Hey guys, Mrs. Thompson here, and today we are talking about phase diagrams. Um, at the bottom here, you have a picture of all of the different names of each phase change. If you don't have these memorized, uh, get them memorized. You have a chart somewhat similar to this in your intermolecular forces notes. If not, you might want to draw this diagram. Okay, or picture. That's different than the phase diagram. All right, so what is a phase diagram? It's just a graph of pressure versus temperature, um, and that graph shows what that substance is in terms of what phase it is at that particular temperature and pressure. So all that data is plotted, and we see something like this. Okay. Uh, for today's phase diagram notes, you do need three different colors, actually maybe four. So get out some colored pencils. And when you color these, I'd like you to color it very lightly because we're going to write over the top of them. If you'd like to use highlighter, that might be a good idea, but be careful that you don't put too much ink on it so that it's not, so you're not able to write on it. You want to be able to write over the top. All right, so here we go. We need three different colors so far. Now you're going to color this section right here. Any color you want, it could be blue. Then this section, and then this one. So color the three different colors on this diagram. All right. Um, these three different colors represent different phases that those, or whatever substance this is, what phase it's in at that particular temperature and pressure. So if I needed to use this graph, and I'd say, okay, well, what phase is, let's say this is water, um, at 0.5 atmospheres and negative 100 degrees Celsius. Well, water would be in the solid form. It'd be right here. Anywhere in this blue area, you would see solid. And the reason we're seeing solid is because over here, temperatures are low. They're in the negatives, and the pressure is somewhat high. Okay. So you have lots of pressure pushing down to make those particles pack together. In this middle area here, you have liquid. The reason you have liquid is because here the temperature is a little bit warmer and you have high pressure keeping the particles together. In this segment, it's a gas. The reason you have gas is because you have high temperatures or you have a low pressure. So high temperatures making those particles move around like crazy, like a gas, and then low pressure not pushing down on them so that they are spread out. Okay, so when you look at our phase diagrams, we're not going to look at more complex phase diagrams. They're going to be pretty basic, just like this. Uh, there's always these three segments. They always go in this order, solid, liquid, gas. All right. So I have an example for you. Which letter represents the gas phase in this picture? All right, hopefully you said Z. Z is the gas phase where pressure is low and temperatures are high. All right, uh, we're going to look at points of interest within the graph. So there's a bunch, but here's our first one. Uh, points along the curves. So anywhere where you see a line, like here and here and here, um, on the line, what you get are two phases that are coexisting. So if I'm on the barrier line between solid and liquid, solid and liquid exist in an equilibrium right here on this line. All right, so it says, for example, on the solid line, liquid curve, excuse me, solid liquid curve, liquid is freezing into solid and solid is melting into liquid. So you see this picture right here, you've got ice particles ice molecules and water molecules and what's happening is some are freezing some are melting and you end up with an equilibrium okay. we're going to label that on our graph okay so between the solid liquid line if I'm going in this direction in terms of changing temperature um, by heating it as I cross this barrier right here it is melting when you are writing these, please write them as small as possible because we have a lot to draw on this graph. So 
hopefully you didn't already make that big, but please make everything that you're writing pretty small. Okay. And try to write them in the areas where I'm writing them so you don't have to erase later and put something somewhere else. All right, so all along this line right here, we have melting occurring as long as we're going from lower temperatures to higher temperatures. The opposite's true all along this line. If I'm going in the opposite direction from higher temperatures to low, these are freezing. Okay, important that you know that. Uh, if we look at the liquid to gas line, well, liquid to gas is vaporization. So going to a higher temperature, that's vaporization. All along this line, we have liquid and gas in equilibrium. The opposite's true in this direction, you have condensation. So from gas to liquid, that's condensation. Cooling it down makes the gas particles condense. All right, then we have this line right here, the line between solid and gas, which is something we don't really talk about all the time. Um, from solid to gas, when you add a little bit of energy and the pressure is just right, a solid will sublime. Something that you've seen in sublimation before, maybe you haven't, but maybe you've seen it on TV, is dry ice. Dry ice is solid carbon dioxide. The solid carbon dioxide, once it gets to normal conditions, sublimes. So it skips that whole step of becoming a liquid and goes directly from a solid to a vapor, to a gas. Okay. The opposite is true. Gas can also become a solid, and we call that deposition. Uh, you have seen this in the morning when you walk out um, in the morning and it's really cold at night and you see frost on the grass or on your car windows. That is deposition. All right, so another example. Which letter represents a point where condensation and evaporation coexist? So where do you see both those things happening? In equilibrium? Right there, between the liquid and the gas phase. All right, if you didn't notice, there is a point where all three phases actually meet. We have a special name for this point. It is called the triple point. So where all three phases coexist, um, we call it the triple point, and that has a specific temperature and a specific pressure that that happens. It's like, it happens only really quickly at one point. Okay. Here's an example of the triple point happening in some, this is probably T-butyl alcohol. Uh, the T-butyl alcohol is, starts to boil, then it starts to freeze. They're reaching the triple point where it's going back and forth from boiling and freezing and uh, melting and evaporating and condensing. It's doing all of those three things at once. And so we need to label our graph. Triple point is right there. So label that triple point. Okay. The next point on the graph you need to know is the critical point. Now the critical point happens at the end of the liquid gas line. And we call that area the supercritical region. Um, this represents a point where the gas and the liquid are no longer distinguishable from each other. You can't tell the difference between the two. We call that fluid that occurs supercritical fluid, and they use things um, supercritical fluid in things like dry cleaning. Um, they also use it in some other industrial processes. Here's an animation of what's going on in supercritical fluid. So let's see when it starts over at one. All right, so it says below the critical parameters, two phases exist, then the liquid starts to expand and form a gas, and then they become less distinct. And we have the supercritical fluid when you can't tell the difference. When it starts to cool, you start to see them come back together and kind of separate. But here we go, there it's changing, still see two different phases. Right there, that's the supercritical fluid. You can only tell there's one, and they start to separate as they cool. All right, so we need to label the region on this graph. So I'd like you to use that fourth color I mentioned earlier to label that. Uh, you also need to label the critical point. There it is, right at the end of the liquid gas line. And then there is the supercritical region where you have supercritical fluid right there. Supercritical fluid. All right. 
Um, some other things that we need to know is how to be able to tell normal boiling point and normal freezing point. All right, so normal boiling point and condensation point can be found by identifying the temperature where the liquid gas curve meets at one atmosphere. Remember, one atmosphere is the same thing as 101.3 kilopascals and 760 millimeters of mercury and a bunch of other units. Uh, normal happens at sea level. Did I mention that? Because you have one atmosphere above you. All right, so let's find the normal, what is it, boiling point and condensation point. Now, I say that they're the same point, boiling point and condensation point, because remember, all along this line right here, okay, all along that line, you have both phases in equilibrium, one vaporizing, one condensing. Okay, so I drew a line at one atmosphere to see where it crosses the liquid gas line. Then I'm going to read down the bottom to figure out what the temperature is. I'm just going to label that right there. That's the normal boiling point slash condensation point. If I wanted to know what temperature that was, I'd say that is 140 degrees Celsius. So this boils at 140 degrees Celsius. So if I asked you what is the normal freezing point for the substance, you'd say negative 15 degrees Celsius, or normal melting point, negative 15 degrees Celsius. They happen in the same temperature. This one's for you. Identify the normal boiling point and freezing point. Okay. All right. So first thing I do is just kind of decide where solid liquid gas. Then I draw a line right there at one atmosphere because that's normal. And then I would figure out what the temperature is. Now, when it's crossing this line here between solid and liquid, that is freezing and melting, right? So freezing this direction, melting in that direction. And so if I read this temperature, let's say it's close to, this side it's negative, about negative 24 degrees Celsius. It's kind of hard to move the line over. Um, and then I can do the same for the boiling point. That would happen right here where liquid and gas meet and they cross the one atmosphere line. That's about 50 degrees Celsius. All right, next question. Uh, which letter represents the critical point? See if you remember that one. All right, it is B. It's at the end of the liquid to gas line. All right, next, uh, we have to learn about density in terms of this graph. So usually solids are more dense than liquids because their particles, as you add pressure, they come closer together. However, this is not the case for water. For water, instead of those particles coming closer together as they cool, those hydrogen bonds kind of lock into place. And so you see right down here in this diagram, liquid molecules are actually closer together because they're making those hydrogen bonds and breaking them. Whereas in ice, they're locked into place and you get like pockets of a, a vacuum. So you get less, more space in here. And so the crystals that form make it so that ice floats on top of water. We can usually just use the solid liquid curve to predict if the liquid is denser than the solid. And to do this, we're going to draw a line vertically from the temperature of the triple point. And if that solid liquid line curves to the left, we can say that the liquid is denser. Okay, so here are two substances. And we're going to see which one has the greatest density. So we'll draw a line here, directly straight, so perpendicular to the bottom line. Um, and it crosses the triple point. Okay, then we're going to look at the solid liquid curve, okay, and see which direction it is from the line that we drew. Well, it's this direction, which is right, which means that the solid is denser. Why? Because when pressure is added, as we go up, it's increasing in pressure, it's going to go to the form that takes up the least amount of space. And so we notice here solid has a big space where pressure is pretty high. So solid is denser. Let's try the other one. Vertical line, 
perpendicular to that bottom line and crossing the triple point. Right. And we look to see where this is at. The solid to liquid curve is to the left, which means that the liquid is denser. So as pressure increases, it's more likely to go into the liquid state instead of the solid state because the liquid particles are closer together. All right, so another question. Which one is the triple point? D. Good. Uh, which letter does only, or where does solid exist only in this picture? That's right there at one, anywhere in there, as long as it's not on the line, only solid exists. Where does the density of the liquid, how does it compare to the density of the solid? So I do the same thing, draw the line, it moves away from it to the left, and so that means that the liquid is denser. All right. Hope that you got something out of those notes. I will see you when we get to class.